This is one of those moments where I have to insert an um while I have some thinking time. Who am I? I think I'm an adventure motorcyclist first. I'm, I'm a traveller. I've always travelled. Motorcycling, I, I sort of stumbled upon that uh, over three beers in the bar and it just turned into one of the best things that I've ever done. And um, on the side, I'm an author. I never intended to write books, but um, well, people seem to like what I'm doing and for me it's sharing the fun. It's, um, yeah, encouraging other people to think, well, if an idiot like this bloke can do it, then so could I. I didn't have to carry a rucksack. I could stop wherever I wanted to. All of those sorts of things. And yeah, a motorcycle, that's it. Just stumbled upon a chronic like that. It seemed to be... Do you know, one of the things was w the ability to wake up every morning and think, what shall I do today? Not what does my bus ticket or my train ticket tell me I have to. Gosh. I'd really rather not go back to jail in Tanzania. Do you know, I don't think there is anywhere that I wouldn't want to go to. I'm not a great fan of cold country, so I have to admit that. I'd rather be riding with the sunshine. And I don't mind the, the real humidity and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I'd rather not ride where it's particularly cold. I couldn't do a Jacques Lucasen, for example, and, and ride in Alaska um, in the snowy season. That's, that's not my cup of tea. There aren't a huge number. It's once you get used to the fact that you're making yourself vulnerable and you start to enjoy what happens as a result of that vulnerability, you stop being afraid of it. And the old cliched saying is fear of the unknown and fear of the unknown is a reality. Once you get used to that and you start to revel in it, then a lot of the disadvantages disappear. I was always afraid of things like breaking down in the middle of nowhere. What would I do? But I soon learnt that Actually, if it's a road, somebody will come along and you'll work something out as a result of that. I was afraid of falling off the bike in the middle of nowhere and the bike landing up on, on, upside down on top of me. Well, I've been lucky and it's never really happened whenever I've fallen off, which has happened a lot. Then somebody sooner or later has come along, or I've been with somebody. I never liked the idea of being shot at and there are some parts of the world that you can be shot at and I have been shot at. The first time was the wrong place, wrong time, and the second time was because I did something that was stupid and it served me right, but fortunately there were bad shots. So, you know, there are those sorts of things. I think the worst thing for me about doing a long distance trip is getting to the end. It's, it's the thought of actually this wonderful experience that I'm having is about to finish. What happens next? I'm more afraid of that than I am of setting off at the beginning of an, event, an adventure. That's a really spot on question. One of the first things that I do when I'm getting ready to go off on a trip is I write a will. Because can you imagine the trauma to your family if you snuff it out there somewhere on the road and then they've got to deal with the whole business of, well, what do we do? What needs to be done with his money? What, needs to, what, what do we do with his body? Do we fly it back? What are his wishes for those sorts of things? So the first thing, yeah, write a will. If I snuff it out there somewhere, I want to be buried there. I kind of like the idea of being buried out in some strange exotic land somewhere rather than being brought home here. And why should my family have to go through all of that expense to do that? So yeah, that's, that's one thing. I think the other way that adventure travel affects family and friends is that all of a sudden you're going to be distanced. So keeping in touch with them and letting them know what you're planning and, and have some sort of setup so that they know that if you're in real trouble, you'll be able to get in touch with them some way. I think the other thing is have a really good travel insurance policy so they've got the peace of mind of knowing that if something does go pear-shaped to you when you're on the road that you're going to get the right sort of medical treatment and if the worst has happened you'll be flown home so that you can get medical treatment where you are at home and I know for my family that's been huge peace of mind. At the moment what my partner and I are doing is very satisfying for both of us. We're both still able to escape for month-long trips um, preferably to exotic places, places that we haven't thought of going to before. For example, we've been riding in uh, Vietnam, but we also did a month riding in, in Tenerife. And what a surprise that was. 
the island of Tenerife has had a huge historical influence on the world and those roads are just magic. And if we hadn't done it, I would have no idea about that. So we're doing things like that. Last year we rode to Croatia and Bosnia and that was fascinating too. So we're keeping the itch scratched with those things. Longer trip, not, not at the moment. Uh, I've never ever traveled intending to write anything. And if I were to do another trip, I wouldn't be saying to people, well, when I come back, I'll write a book. No, if I'm gonna do another journey, I'm doing that journey for the journey's reasons. Um, I want to do, I want to wake up in the morning and not be hassled thinking about having to see certain things or meet particular different types of people so that I can write a book. Uh, that's why I said when we first started talking, I'm a traveller first and then the author comes afterwards and I'd far rather be that way. One of the downsides to being a self-published author is that you don't have all of the connections and the marketing might of the big publishing houses. So it's a much slower drip feed process. I enjoy it because I spend my time talking to people who I want to be talking with and quite often in places where I want to be and that's fine. I will probably never be a wealthy person but I'm a wealthy person in smiles and that's great. I think I have an insatiable curiosity. The world is just such a magnificent place and I know this sounds a little bit corny but it's full of brilliant people and when you're traveling you're out amongst this these people in, in this magic world of ours and every time you turn a corner there's something new and special to look at and I know that and so yeah getting up in the morning it's always I wonder what's going to happen today and I love that feeling it's because it's good stuff that's more likely to be happening. Oh, that'll be Horizons Unlimited without doubt. It's um, a huge resource for people who are interested in overlanding and it's kept up to date by overlanders, many of whom who are on the road actually at the moment or have just come back from trips. There are quite a few Horizons Unlimited events that go on around the UK as well, one in Ireland, uh, one in Scotland. Um, the big one happens uh, in the Midlands just near Castle Donington. And, um, over the four days of that, there'll be over 150 sessions of presentations. And some of them are by professional presenters from the travel world, and some of them are from people who are literally just back from trips. And this may be the first time that they've ever stood on a stage, but they've just got all the passion, the imagination, and all the information that they want to share.